this is scandalous. Millions mm. of people are being failed because they can't see their GP for up to three weeks. They can't get an appointment for three weeks, which is ridiculous. If you've got a sick child, you know, what you're going to do, you're going to go to casualty. Yeah. And that's not, a, that's not always appropriate. Now, GPs are closing their doors during core times of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah. at least once a week. Um, so people are saying, well, how can this be? Doctors have to provide a reasonable service as part of their contract, and yet people can't go there. Yeah. The surgery is just closed. Now, GPs will say, you don't understand how we work. They'll say, you know, we have to see patients in the surgery, yeah, but in between those patients, we have to do all our paperwork. We have to do our referrals mm -hmm. uh, to specialists. We have to look at tests that come in. And we take maybe up to 140 calls. I know many GPs who will take 140 telephone calls oh in order to sift out the ones that need to come in right. and not see the other hundred, but give them advice over the phone. So they're still working behind those closed surgery doors. Mm. Otherwise, they don't get a chance to filter out what's important and right. what isn't. So there are two sides to the story. The sad truth is we don't have enough GPs. We've got more GPs leaving than coming in and being <laughs> recruited. And it's a massive problem that all politicians of all parties need to address urgently. No, they absolutely do. And I know mm. that's something you've been, you're very oh. passionate about. I know yeah. that. Mm. First up, we've got Alison. Mm. Alison is from Lincoln. Now, her nine-year-old daughter has suffered with eczema since she was three months old. Tried loads of treatments, including UVA light therapy. None of it, though, seems to have worked, has it, Alison? It's not really worked. What's your question for Dr. Hillary? Hi, Alison. Hi there. Um, we're at a bit of a loss, really, as to what else we could do to tackle um, our daughter's eczema. Um, have you got any advice on what we can do to help prevent or minimise it, please? Yeah, do you know what the trigger factors are? Do you know what the, core, the underlying cause is? Um, she's got lots of allergies. The main one is dust mites, right. which obviously is difficult. Okay. Have you start? Have you tried to cut down the population of house, house dust mites by changing curtains to blinds, changing carpets to wooden flooring, hard flooring, all that sort of thing? We haven't done all of that yet. No, we we have had a bit of advice from our consultant to suggest to do that, but we're we're doing um, lots of other things. She has anti-dust mite yeah. bedding, um, and we're hoovering constantly. Um, but yeah, yeah any of that. All that. And it's the eczema that's the problem. So really, it's, it's about not using detergents and soaps and fragrances, which can upset the skin even more, not overwashing that washes out all the natural oils, using moisturiser as much as possible, and a, a little bit of mild, dilute cortisone to suppress the inflammation. Uh, I think you've tried UVA light, haven't you, phototherapy, and it hasn't been as successful yeah, as you wanted. Sorry. No, she's currently un undergoing that at the moment. Yeah, um, it's it's not. She's had quite a lot of sessions, and it's not been as successful as we hoped. But it's still ongoing, so yeah. we, there's still time. It helps in about 70% of cases by reducing the overactive immune system, calming down the inflammation, and it's worth persevering with for a little while. Otherwise, lots of moisturisers still and uh, dilute cortisone if necessary. Good luck with that. Good luck. Thank you, Alison. Thank, Thank nice you so you, much. Alison. We've also got a question from Claire. Claire's in Sheffield. Now, her son, Joseph, who is 11 months old, suffers from lots of allergies. Managed to control some of them, I believe, but struggling to control them scratching, which is causing him to wake up at night. Poor wee soul. Claire, yeah. good morning to you. What do you want to say to Dr. Hillary? Boy, Joseph. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he, he's just very, very itchy. You've heard of the itch-scratch cycle. When we get an itch yeah. from whatever cause, we tend to scratch it. It increases inflammation. It releases cells that irritate the nerves. It makes things worse. And it's about stopping the scratching. In older children, you can do lots. You can get them to just gently pinch rather than scratch or scratch away from the area of the inflammation. But with an 11-month-old, with Joseph, it's difficult. What you can do, you're probably yeah. already using some little cotton mitts. Um, keeping yeah. the nails short, uh, wearing cotton mitts to, to stop the excoriation of the skin, but, but also keep the skin cool. It's usually worse at night when the skin is warm, as it would be for any kind of skin allergy. Um, and and keep, if, if the skin is cool, you get less inflammation. So that's a good tip. Cotton clothing, never wool, never anything uh, synthetic. Um, and making sure you avoid the detergents and the soaps and anything that might irritate the skin more but also emollients, plenty of, plenty of oils to add to the skin, bath oils as well, and um, I suppose a little bit of dilute hydrocortisone 
with the guidance of your doctor if necessary. But it, 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 he, hopefully he'll grow out of it. 11 months, a lot of children will grow out of their eczema by the age of five, six, seven. So, you, you know, it, it, I would be optimistic. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Claire, thank, thank you. you so much. That must be so, and so thank difficult. thank you for talking to us. Because you're right, a wee baby, they're not, they're, you can't I know, and you see them, them scratch. Bad and enough. It's, it's heartbreaking. No, it's terrible. It thank you, Hills. Thank you. We'll see you thank next you week. Very.